All right. Okay. We had a bit of a. Um, so, everybody, welcome here. Uh, we are uh, live and we are in the bog. And I am your uh, local co host with uh, Katrina. So, my name is uh, Carl. I work in Clean Tech uh, Forests or Estonia. And uh, basically, we run uh, projects uh, such as these, plus help a lot with uh, clean tech uh, startups and. Uh, and anyway, try to advance this um, environmental topics in in, uh, in Estonia and, and further afar as well. But uh, today, so we are in uh, North Estonia at the moment in uh, Viru Bog. And today is um, with us also Anna Helena, who is a uh, bog expert. And she just defended her uh, doctor's degree on that. So she has a lot of uh, knowledge about this and will um, today share a lot of information with you and we will do it because last year we had problems with connections in uh, in the bog so we will do it in uh, um, in a different way a little bit first uh, we will start off we will show you a uh, we record pre-recorded today a few parts which are very uh, short like 10 minute uh, um, block so we will do a nine minute block now which we will show you then uh, we are here with Anna Helena to respond to your questions, uh, which you might uh, have. So write them down at, in the beginning. And uh, then we will do a short Kahoot with 10 questions. And she will tell you a little bit more about it. And afterwards, we will show you another um, clip uh, from another part of the bog where they are restoring actually uh, old uh, peatland. Um, and then after that, you will have a, a um, short round of questions still. So altogether, not more than uh, one hour of your uh, valuable time. But I uh, hope you will enjoy it. And then uh, let's kick it off with the uh, first block. Hi, uh, welcome to this Viru bog. And uh, this is a very typical uh, raised bog in Estonia. Uh, in Estonia, we have about 1 million hectares of peatlands, from it, which about uh, 200,000 are protected and in a pristine state. So, from 22% uh, of uh, peatland of um, land area is peatlands, then 6% uh, of those are in pristine state in Estonia. These kind of peatlands are very important for climate change mitigation as they accumulate carbon to the peat. This kind of sphagnum is the, or peat mosses. These are the main uh, peat forming plant in this kind of raised box. They grow upwards, but the, the low parts are almost dead. Or if it's a longer time series, then they're completely dead. Uh, so they grow up but uh, from the below they form peat and uh, peat is an organic rich uh, mineral uh, so uh, in this kind of uh, acidic and uh, waterlogged uh, conditions these peat mosses uh, if they die they don't uh, decompose completely and uh, if uh, those uh, peat mosses grow about one centimeter a year uh, then uh, they form about one millimeter of a peat per year. So uh, accumulating uh, carbon in a long run. Uh, but uh, these kind of uh, conditions where the water table is high also uh, produce me methanes to uh, methanogenic uh, bacteria. But this is a natural process and the lasting time of uh, methane in the atmosphere is uh, much uh, shorter than uh, the period when the CO2 uh, is uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, this kind of uh, Viru bog is uh, 235 uh, uh, hectares large and it is uh, about uh, 5,000 uh, years long, uh, uh, old. And, uh, uh, the peat layer in here is uh, five to six uh, meters uh, deep. So we're walk walking on a peat, uh, uh, thick peat layer. 
and uh, this peatland started to develop and, uh, from the lake. So it was a lake, then the peat layer, then the vegetation came and peat layer grew, grew and grew and grew until this uh, six meters depth. And uh, now go, go walking. And this uh, Viru Bog is one of the most uh, visited uh, bogs in Estonia. Every year about uh, 40,000 people come here. And uh, this broad walk we are walking on uh, was built on in uh, 1974. And already in 1987 uh, they built here this uh, viewing tower. And this was uh, also the oldest viewing tower in Estonia. Now it's reconstructed and uh, completely new. But uh, during the Soviet time, as the maps were not uh, allowed in very, uh, very big detail, then uh, most of the people didn't know about this place and the possibilities to walk and come here. In reality, uh, these kind of uh, pine trees, although they are quite short, are not very young. Uh, these may be uh, 60 or even 80 years old, because this kind of uh, conditions, when, when it's very acidic, nutrient poor, and as you can see from the bog pools, uh, the water level is quite high, even uh, in the summer, are not good for uh, tree growth. So you can see that the pines are dying here because of those kind of uh, harsh conditions in the box. Or even uh, their growth is so small that the old pine trees look very young. Mm. In these kind of uh, conditions uh, in the box, the vegetation, although there is a lot of it in here, it is quite uh, species poor. There are some uh, certain uh, species that are uh, growing here, uh, like uh, peat mosses or cloud berries uh, or uh, different uh, cotton grass. Uh, but uh, usual mineral uh, soil uh, species cannot uh, live here. These kind of bog pools are very nice in the summer and nice habitats for the birds. And the water table depth in this kind of uh, bog pools is about uh, 2.5 until 3 meters deep. Uh, due to the uh, organic content in this uh, water, the water is brown and sun makes it warm. So in the upper layers, it's nice to swim. Hi, Carl. Do you yes. want to see, uh, show us the uh, favorite pastime of Estonians? Yes, it's amazing with this time. Oh, 
Hi everybody, it's nice to see you on live and do you have uh, any questions about the first part? Yeah, thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear us. We can't hear you, but we'll probably soften it. Uh, and yeah, everyone, uh, we can start to gather questions in the chat. Um, I, ca I can't do it at the moment because. So, nice. can you hear us? Uh, what questions are there? We can hear you yes. now. Loud and clear. Yeah. No, I mean, like gone again. I had a question. Can you hear us, guys? Four months to studio. Yeah. I was curious about the relationship with the bogs from a cultural perspective. Why are they important? You talked about, you know, obviously swimming in them, but what what makes them important? Uh, <laughs> We can't hear you. Still can't we turned hear. on the loudspeaker. So there was some feedback. Oh, we've got uh, a pine. Very good question, Alex. And Wait, sorry. Sorry, guys. We are having a very quick issue with getting the audio from uh, our bog expert there. Just give us one minute. Okay. So think of questions that could be on all the different levels. Ecologically, socially, economically. Thank you. I'd be interested also in some numbers on uh, CO2. Like, could you tell how much CO2 is in this area? That would be interesting. I'll write it down also. Yeah. yeah, now I think you can hear me back. Uh, I start with the question about the cultural um, uh, importance. Uh, for a long time, uh, Borgs and also Myers uh, for Estonians uh, were not uh, very important. Uh, in the very beginning, yes, as a places to go during the war and or if there was any dispute or battle 
then Estonians went uh, to box to hide from the enemy. Uh, but uh, during the Soviet time and also during the First Rep Republic, uh, those kind of um, bogs and mires, uh, they don't, uh, they're nutrient poor, they don't any, uh, have, you can't grow anything here. They were like waste of space to be battled with. And they're like, uh, Estonian uh, history is a battle be between people and the bog. Uh, to train them to make some uh, fields to there where possible uh, to uh, dig ditches. Uh, it was the most important thing uh, until uh, the beginning of uh, uh, until this uh, 1950s, 1960s, uh, when uh, the the importance uh, for as a nature con conservation places of this box uh, came into a knowledge uh, to Estonians. And uh, also there was uh, a bog war in Estonia during that time uh, between uh, the scientists who wanted to save the bogs and uh, keep them in pristine state and also between the state which uh, wanted to make them for forestry and agriculture. Um, but nowadays uh, bogs are mainly for recreation, uh, uh, berry picking, um, walking around and swimming and this kind of uh, uh, pastimes. Uh, so we don't uh, anymore turn those to, uh, new bog parts to forest. Uh, we have a uh, peat excavation is only allowed in uh, this kind of uh, uh, really disturbed, bo disturbed bogs. Uh, but uh, now we value the, them, uh, have their cultural value or understand it, but uh, for a very long time they were like a waste of, of space. People were even afraid to go to the box because you had the bog pools, the uh, walking there is quite kind of difficult, you can fall <laughs> in and uh, they were afraid of these places. So any more questions? I heard something was about uh, the climate impact of those. Yeah, we've got other bogs protected, especially considering their long-term carbon storage capabilities that are relevant for climate change. That's from Alex. Yeah, uh, the, most of this kind of pristine bogs we are here are protected. Uh, but uh, we must keep in mind that a lot have been already so disturbed in Estonia. There is uh, no protection value. Um, and these are used uh, like uh, for peat excavation until the end uh, so uh, it is uh, we have a like evaluation of uh, the values of uh, different peatlands like in a good state uh, you can do anything uh, but in uh, box in bad state uh, you can still uh, use those but uh, restoration is uh, going on in a very large scale uh, currently in Estonia, so uh, uh, this mitigates the climate impacts. So, any more questions? And I think then we can uh, go on. Uh, we got some, some more in the chat. In the chat, I can see uh, how the book has been promoted to be visited and uh, popular. Uh, there is uh, no need from, for promotion. Uh, we have this uh, RMK, which is our uh, state forest management, uh, which uh, keeps uh, th those uh, recreational tracks and broadwalks and uh, towers here. And they have just a website and uh, uh, for currently, box in Estonia don't uh, need any more promotion because they are full of people uh, like uh, all the time, especially during these uh, COVID times when uh, we are, were not allowed to go to restaurants and uh, uh, nightclubs and so on. And then Estonians went, uh, we made our own uh, nightclub and uh, restaurant here. We had uh, picnics and uh, walks and there was problem that uh, in this kind, this box, uh, uh, we had the police uh, looking uh, that uh, there was not too many people in the box because it was a problem. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, East drainage uh, for agricultural purposes is also a problem in Estonia, I can read. And I know that the tropical the peatland suffers a lot due to water depletion. Uh, yes, it is uh, still a problem in Estonia because during uh, those uh, in 19th uh, century and the end of 18th uh, century, a lot of uh, fen peatlands or nutrient rich peatlands were turned uh, to agricultural land. And a lot of uh, fields are still under the agricultural current use. Uh, and uh, belonging to the private lands, and we don't have a very good uh, methods to restore those peatlands. And uh, this is uh, still a problem that we cannot take uh, land away from uh, every farmers because they use it uh, every day uh, for their livelihoods. And uh, this is a problem that uh, we know what to do with uh, those uh, resto uh, forested peatlands. We know what to do with the old peat excavation sites, and we can't do it because they are mainly uh, state land. But uh, the, the impact of agri agriculture on uh, peatlands has not been uh, approached at all uh, in Estonia. Uh, and what are the biggest threats to the box? Uh, currently, the biggest is that uh, the, those uh, which have been ditched already or drained, uh, the drainage is going on. Uh, and uh, also there are reconstruction of this, those drainage ditches, which were built during the Soviet time. So the ditches are uh, kept clean and uh, so the uh, peatlands are still under drainage. And, uh, but from many of those sites, in reality, the, uh, the timber is not gathered or they are not uh, used uh, for, ac for active for forestry. Uh, so uh, it would be logical to restore those sites. And uh, as uh, quite uh, many of our, or very large part of our pristine uh, state uh, books are already protected. And then there are not uh, much threats to those. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are like uh, those that are not protected, uh, that are anyway in a bad state. Uh, there is uh, still economic uh, use uh, for uh, uh, for uh, keeping the ditches open, uh, that uh, people don't want their lands uh, uh, waterlogged uh, nearby, and also some uh, impact of uh, peat excavation is still there. So if you don't have any question, uh, I can ask uh, for Kahoot. So you can ask, answer me some questions. Sure. Thank you very much for all the presentation and all the great insights. So I have uh, added here and share my screen with the game pin. So you just need to go either to the kahoot dot uh, www.kahoot.it or if you have the Kahoot app and just put this uh, pin. And here we will see like when you have joined that you have joined and then when everyone is there, then we can start. I can share also the link in the chat and also the pin. Yeah, Sara is there. Nice. Hila, welcome. Emma. John, Alex, okay, okay, great. Let's see how many we need. We 
put in a, a bog visit as the winner can visit a bog. Oh, that would be great. And jump with Carl there. <laughs> yes. That would be awesome. Uh, I it, think, mm -hmm. By the way, is it, um, does it cost entry or is it for free to go to the? Yes, it is completely free to go. Uh, in mm. Estonia, you can go to forest area where it's for free. Do you go free with the public transport? I no, the box is open. It is a, that is something. Yeah, I was just joking because uh, earlier Katarina told us that public transport in Tallinn is for free, and yeah. uh, that's about it. I think we are all here. Besides, if the coaches want to join and the game. Okay, then I can start it. Yeah, you can start it and uh, I can explain more between the questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I think I must explain that uh, a little bit. Uh, the right was is uh, Cinderella because, uh, like Cinderella, books are considered to be like uh, dirty, smelly, and quite useless waste of uh, space in the between the habitats. So Eusen uh, describes peatlands as a Cinderella habitat that they are overlooked and undervalued. Uh, but in reality, those uh, peatlands provide uh, very important uh, uh, ecosystem services and uh, also provide recreational value, as we can see here. Uh, so we can uh, move on to the next question. Yes, you are m correct. Uh, although uh, peatlands make up only a two, about uh, three percent of Earth, uh, they have accumulated about uh, thirty percent of carbon in them. Uh, so about five hundred and fifty gigatons. This is a large amount of carbon inside peat, and this is twice as much as in uh, carbon in uh, forests. And uh, as you can see, the vegetation in here is quite low. And so, of course, the carbon inside the peatlands is not in vegetation. It's only about 3% is in vegetation, but 97% in average is uh, in peat layers. Uh, so, the next question.
Yes, uh, you are mostly right. Uh, the beet moss is have been used for many things. Uh, they have been used in Estonia for as a baby nappy, as a uh, for wound dressing, also for lamp wick for burning, and also they used uh, they stuffed the the log houses between the logs uh, with the uh, with the beet mosses uh, because it was uh, good uh, for insulation, and it is very high absorbent. It uh, absorbs about uh, twenty times more uh, water or liquid inside uh, than its uh, own uh, dry weight. And it's also mildly antiseptic, so it cleans out the wound. So the next question. Oh, so one lucky, not the chest of gold coins. Uh, those uh, two men, they found a mummified uh, body of about uh, 25 or 30 years uh, old uh, woman who was um, strangled or hanged. And the uh, woman was uh, from uh, 17th century, but as, uh, she was uh, inside the beet layer and everything decomposes very slowly inside the beet layer. Uh, they were they were digging. Firstly, they thought that uh, th this were were just uh, some tree roots they were digging through, but they were really his uh, her leg bones. And uh, then, uh, then uh, they, when they got to the face and uh, clothes, then they saw that it is uh, so well preserved. They thought it's a recent murder that they had to call the police. And then the police said that uh, called the historians, and uh, they found out that the body was from the 17th uh, century. So in Estonia, we have uh, one beat body also found. Next question. Yes, this is uh, completely true. Uh, that uh, when the folks are in the uh, mountains or on the mountains, uh, then the, when, the, when it's a heavy rainfall, uh, then uh, the folk collect the water inside and don't let it uh, so push into the uh, rivers and valleys, uh, so mitigating the impact of uh, heavy rail, uh, rainfall. And uh, this is ex extremely important in the mountainous areas, like in Western Europe. Uh, and with uh, this uh, climate change, uh, you can see happening now in uh, Western Europe. So the next question, please. But the cloud berries would be nice also. Yeah. 
head, so it's not like that. It's too late. Yes. May I ask a question? Can I get the elevator? Plus. Can you point to me? Can you point to me? Uh, so, 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 uh, sorry, some technical issues again. Uh, okay, try up here, Mr. Steve. Yes, uh, I hope it's not uh, uh, anymore. So, um, such uh, high amounts of beats, or they are called pulsas, uh, have de developed in uh, permafrost tundra due to accumulation of a permafrost underneath this beat layer. And in uh, such permafrost uh, mounds, uh, there is also a lot of me methane inside trapped. Uh, so, when uh, the permafrost should uh, uh, melt, then also the high methane concentrations are emitted from there. And please, uh, now, next question. <laughs> Nobody knew. In Estonia, we have been uh, picking cloudberries and cranberries uh, for a long time, and uh, such places where cranberries and cloudberries grow, grow in larger amounts are very precious to our families. They are kept in secret. Uh, we don't uh, say maybe to the, only to the best friends. That's where we go berry picking. And uh, uh, this is very important knowledge. Uh, but uh, during the Soviet time, uh, this um, cranberry uh, and uh, cloudberry uh, production in different forks, it was the one uh, thing that uh, scientists could say, say that uh, here you can see there is pristine nice fork, there you can have so much uh, cranberries there, so we must protect it, we sh shouldn't drain it or excavate it. And this, it was one, uh, this... Uh, statement that uh, worked really uh, for the government. Uh, so they made a big uh, uh, growing uh, like field work uh, or big, uh, berry picking field works to get this uh, kind of maps uh, how much uh, cranberries are growing in some places. So it was very important. So next question.
Yes, the main uh, comparison from uh, e with the Estonian drain peatlands and uh, is with the transport uh, sector because uh, it is estimated that from Estonian uh, drain peatlands uh, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions are about uh, two uh, tons of uh, CO2 equivalents annually. Uh, but uh, the emission, uh, but this is comparable uh, to those uh, those in transport sector because the energy sector is uh, much larger. Thank you. Next question. Yes, exactly. So those are very la uh, small peat mosses I showed you before, uh, they can house uh, many bacteria such as uh, diatoms, algae, cyanobacteria. Uh, we suppose uh, different uh, rotifers, different all these micro animals that are living in the uh, box. And one uh, scientist uh, decided to count them all and uh, got uh, over 32,000 of these uh, micro microscopic animals from uh, one single uh, this peat moss plant uh, growing in the bog pool. So you, uh, you can see that there is a lot of diversity in a very small area. This next question. This is uh, used, uh, this um, uh, Labrador marsh uh, tea or wild rosemary is used for everything. This is a very good plant uh, for many things, but uh, it's still uh, when you walk uh, during the summer in the bog, uh, the smell of this uh, plant can make your head a little bit uh, hurt and uh, make you dizzy. And there are a lot of um, peatland plants used uh, in uh, medicine, like uh, sundews are used uh, for uh, bronchitis and uh, coughing. And uh, uh, so uh, the one value of those peatlands are uh, still uh, the plants that are growing there and their medicinal uh, value. And so uh, we can go on with the next part of the video. Oh, I see the volume. Yahoo for Alex, Lillian, that's in. Congratulations. Yeah, very you know. The next bog expert. Yeah, uh, you can put the on the video. We don't hear an audio, I believe. Uh, 
Carl, I don't know if you're there, but we can't hear anything. Yeah, boys are working with that. Okay. For uh, training the peatland uh, to uh, make the forest grow better or, and to get the timber from this kind of uh, peatlands. Uh, these kind of attempts in uh, nutrient poor bogs were not successful, even when fertilized, because the peat layer is very nutrient poor and there is not uh, much for trees to grow on. Uh, but th these kind of old ditches still drain the peatland, so making the shrubs to grow more and uh, lead the water away from the peatland. But when the water is lower, then the more peat is aerated or the oxygen can uh, uh, go into the peat and decompose the peat. So the peat layer is uh, mineralizing and CO2 emissions are coming out from this kind of ecosystem. To make this kind of uh, negative climate impacts of uh, drained peatlands better or decrease those impacts, peatland restoration is done. For that, these kind of old ditches are closed with large peat dams. Uh, these kind of dams hold the water uh, behind this uh, dam, so keeping the water inside the peatlands and uh, not keeping the peatlands in a better health. The human impacts such as uh, drainage for forestry, agriculture and also uh, uh, peat excavation turn peatlands from uh, carbon uh, sinks to carbon sources. Uh, so, and also increasing the fire hazard of, of those sites because the peat is carbon and carbon burns well. This is very important in this kind of uh, warm summers we have now in Estonia. And uh, peatlands are the main uh, places where the landscape fires occur in here and it's very uh, hard to distinguish those. But the peatland restoration, such, uh, which has been done here in Viruborg, uh, mitigates, mitigates those impacts. The water is raised up all around in large ditches with uh, very large peat dams making the areas wet again. Uh, so keeping the carbon inside the peat and water levels high. You can see in this kind of area, we don't see any peat mosses. These have uh, gone with drainage but we see uh, more shrubs like uh, uh, Ledum palustre, uh, cloud fairies, and a lot of pine trees. Some uh, dead from, uh, due to uh, peatland restoration, because when the water level is up, again, the uh, trees don't survive well. But uh, now we go uh, and see the old peat excavation site. In Viru peatland, the peat excavation uh, site here is uh, about 37 hectares large, so quite small in Estonian scale. But uh, the peat excavation was started here uh, from uh, 1960, lasting up to 1985. After that, the area was left as it was. It is a brown field. It was a brown field uh, without any uh, vegetation, and uh, this kind of uh, very dry, uh, drained uh, peatland areas, which are especially open and unvegetated, are very large carbon sources to the atmosphere. So they are like uh, CO2 hotspots. Uh, but uh, due in the last decades, peatland restoration has been uh, increasing in Estonia, other European countries, and also in the world. And uh, so 
by closing the ditches uh, near this uh, peat excavation site. Uh, it was done between 2011 and 2015. The water level also rose inside this uh, peat excavation site. And uh, uh, this uh, makes the habitat suitable for uh, Meyer species. Meyer vegetation like uh, uh, cotton grass, uh, those uh, same peat mosses, which are the peat formers. And again, you can see the uh, spots of uh, peat mosses already growing here. During the restoration, uh, the dams were made uh, on the peat, uh, peat excavation site and also the um, edge ditches were uh, closed completely to keep the uh, to direct some of the water from the peatland and also bring the peatland the plant profile, so small parts of uh, peatland, peatland plants to this area to make this area ag again carbon accumulating ecosystem. Uh, the main aim currently for peat, uh, peatland restoration are uh, to provide habitats for birds. You can see some lapwings uh, here. Uh, flying uh, birds playing there. Uh, there are some uh, peat mosses, cotton grass, uh, also some uh, small perches. And in the future, but this fish, the future will be in a long time scale, maybe 100 years from now. Uh, this peatland uh, can be also similar, not really the same, but uh, similar as the pristine peatland uh, we saw before. In Estonia, uh, peat uh, is excavated mainly for export to, to uh, Western Europe. And uh, we have uh, the list of uh, peatlands that can be excavated without uh, uh, doing uh, much harm to the nature, which have been drained previously or even uh, uh, old peat excavation sites left uh, as they were. But uh, nowadays we cannot uh, excavate peat anymore in this kind of pristine box. These are stri strictly for nature conservation and walking and enjoying. And uh, Estonia, we have uh, about uh, 204 million uh, tons of uh, peat that can be excavated uh, in uh, yeah, uh, but the under but the total reserves, also those that are underneath the nature protection areas, are much larger, about uh, 755 million tons. So we legally can uh, only excavate a small part of it. Uh, but uh, the peat in Estonia is uh, usually transported to Western Europe and used uh, mainly for horticulture. So uh, we no longer use the peat uh, for energy in Estonia, on only a very small proportion in local heating uh, stations. And uh, Esto in Estonia, uh, the peat excavation mainly depends on uh, how good is the weather. In this kind of uh, sunny and warm weather, uh, the peat dries uh, fast in this kind of ex excavation fields. And uh, the more peat can be excavated uh, in, during this kind of uh, warm summers. Uh, but uh, if it's rainy and uh, damp, then uh, the peat excavation amounts are low. So depending on the year in Estonia, about 700 to 900,000 uh, tons of peat are excavated uh, annually. But this only makes a small uh, proportion of uh, the peat uh, uh, growth in Estonia. It, in Estonia, it is allowed that uh, we can only excavate the peat as much as, as, it, uh, as it's uh, growing. So, uh, the total amount of a peat that can be excavated in Estonia, the maximum amount is 2.65 million tons. 
so we can uh, we in reality excavate small amounts but uh, in currently a lot of efforts are put into uh, restoring the old peat peatlands uh, which have been uh, used for uh, forestry or uh, peat excavation uh, this is uh, done with uh, mainly with eu support and to mitigate the climate impacts and uh, and create new habitats and uh, in estonia we have about uh, 10000 hectares of uh, this kind of peatlands already uh, restored and the numbers are increasing annually also doing my phd work i studied this uh, certain uh, peatland and uh, we uh, found out that the already uh, four and five years after the restoration, this kind of area was already a peat accumulating ecosystem. So it binded the carbon inside again, similarly to that pristine block. So uh, this climate impact has, is uh, mitigated by now. Uh, and going on to the uh, history of this site. Uh, this part of peatland was uh, similar to the, that peatland area we visited before. But uh, in the northern part of this peatland, we had already old uh, peat uh, pits. Those uh, pits were uh, digged by hand by people to use the peat for uh, warming the houses and also for bedding for animals. Uh, and this is uh, where the old main uses of peat. But in the uh, 60s, uh, the milled, milling uh, method came uh, to Estonia. Uh, so uh, we needed uh, larger areas to drain. Uh, so building drainage ditches here and uh, removing the vegetation from all of the sites and this kind of uh, sites uh, don't restore themselves although those peat pits uh, can recover quite uh, fastly and here is the picture of uh, 2018 and you can see that the peat pits are still seen here and the water level has uh, risen and some of the um, vegetation is already coming here back. And here we will uh, finish our trip to this Viro uh, Pog uh, and uh, go uh, back to the tower to answer your, all of your uh, I have uh, one uh, question in the chat. What wildlife uh, lives in the bogs? Uh, mainly uh, like waterfowl, uh, golden plovers, uh, ducks, uh, this kind of uh, birds. Uh, but uh, there are also like uh, big uh, animals uh, like uh, uh, moose are going, uh, mainly walking through the box because they are, this is not a very good place to live. It's wet, uh, there is not much food, uh, but uh, they are good place to traveling through and maybe um, stay for one night maximum. Uh, also there are bears and the wolves in these uh, areas but they are also uh, maybe eating some berries but uh, uh, but they are not like uh, uh, all the time here so there is not like little bog uh, bear living inside the here but they we can see them traveling through but mooses are the most often ones you can see here and there are a lot of uh, moose tracks also. Uh, what is the major uh, direct human impact uh, on in the bogs? Uh, in Estonia, the, yes, this drainage is uh, the most uh, important impact. Uh, in addition, there are like uh, some uh, uh, smaller like uh, impacts like. Uh, uh, like from the oil shale uh, plants there is this uh, alkaline um, air pollution uh, coming down on the bog 
and this impacts the vegetation. So there are some uh, mineral soil species coming there also in inside the box, uh, which is. But uh, this is quite local. But uh, drainage is the most important one. So any more questions? So if there is no more zoom, what is the ah? Uh, what do you most love about the box? It took time to come. Uh, uh, I think I love uh, uh, that. Although this one is not so, but uh, but many box in Estonia are so still uh, so distant that uh, you can walk in a bog for a day or two and you don't see anybody. And also there is like a bog smells and how this uh, goes under your feet when you're not going on a broad walk, but uh, like free roaming. Uh, then the feeling of fox and uh, that you can just uh, hop in the pool like uh, Carl did and feel the beat between your uh, feet is a quite uh, nice feeling. Unfortunately, you can't feel in here. Uh, do you happen to know similar ecosystems in other places of the world? Uh, yes, of course, uh, quite similar bogs are in uh, Russia, in uh, Scandinavia, in Canada. Uh, there are also these uh, tropical peatlands, which, have, uh, which are a little bit different, they have uh, more trees and uh, not this kind of uh, uh, sphagnum. Also in uh, Argentina and Chile, in the, there are similar bogs with a lot of these peat mosses uh, go going, uh, growing. And, but they're not exactly the same because the vegetation beco differs in the world. But uh, they ha they, they're basically, yes, south of Brazil, yes, sure. Uh, but uh, they, they have some differences, but uh, yes, in Chilean and uh, Argentinian uh, peatlands, you can, uh, they are quite similar in uh, New Zealand also. Uh, so folks can be everywhere if it's uh, enough rainfall, enough uh, clouds, like in Scotland, we have this uh, blanket box. If it's uh, in the mountains, uh, also in the other Baltic countries, yes, uh, Latvia, Lithuania uh, have a very similar box. Uh, so it's not an European thing, this kind of box, but the uh, box in uh, general and peatlands, they are all over the world. And uh, like every year we are found, uh, finding a new big, large peatlands uh, areas in places we didn't know before, like in uh, Congo, uh, everybody knows about Indonesian peatlands and peat fires and uh, also in uh, like desert countries uh, near the some rivers or there is also peat but the layers are not so thick as in here but there is still these peatlands. Do you know any bog inclusive urbanized settlement approaches? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Mostly uh, if uh, there is bog and there is a settlement, the bog uh, will lose. Uh, it's uh, mainly, uh, yes. Uh, unfortunately in Estonia, yes, uh, the, and everywhere else I know the bogs have been drained uh, for settlements. Yes, then uh, thank you all for listening to visiting uh, the Vidu Bog uh, virtually. Uh, thank I you so you much. And uh, maybe next time you can uh, come uh, to have a real uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. everyone wants to just take their mic off and say hello, say thanks. <laughs> so the guys at the Bog can see, see us. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.